Yeah, I did. You're, you don't edit. No, I did. I reviewed it. I reviewed it when I witnessed it. There was a problem. <laughs> Welcome back to Blanco Bronco Adventures, and we have a spread of DV8 goods for you guys to enjoy. You got to check these new products out. We have Molly panels for our doors. You know the little stretchy thing that always falls apart and your stuff falls on the ground that comes factory in the Bronco? No more. DV8 has cured that problem. We're gonna show you how to install those, super simple. Then, what I'm most excited about, we've got trailing arm skids. These are impressive. I don't know how thick these are, but they're, they're stout. Now, but you gotta make sure when you're ordering them that you get the right ones. DV8 didn't take the easy way out and just make one generic set for all types of Broncos. They made two different ones. If you look at your trailing arms, you have a Badlands or one of those packages, you might already have factory welded on skid plates. You gotta make sure you order the correct ones that have the clearance for those skid plates. But some Broncos like ours, they don't have the factory skid plates. And so we got the ones that have enough clearance to go right up against the frame. I'm gonna show you how to install those. It's gonna be awesome. I think the passenger side might be a little tricky. You might have to play with the gas tank, but we'll get there when we got there. Then we've got the new Molly panel. Where's this go? I don't know. They say it goes right up above your head in the Bronco, like right here. And you can hang stuff on it. And then this crossbar goes in and your passengers in the back, well, they get this, you know, grab handle. We call it another thing from where I'm from. Oh sh handle is what we call it. But we're gonna install this too. Like I said, we got a full spread of DV8 goodness to share with you guys. But we have even bigger news. We've got a big problem. Let's in interview this guy over here. What, what do we got going on first and foremost? Lewis, what, what happened? My tire is flat. The tire? It's flat. So we gotta, we gotta get to fixing this. Did you get your parts? Do you have your parts to fix this bike? I think. So let's track down some tools and we're gonna get this bike fixed very first. You ready? Yeah. All right. The first thing we gotta do, we gotta get our bike in working mode. So you gotta flip it over. We gotta get the wheel in the air. Can you do that? Yeah. All right. It's important to make sure you just have, you know, working room. Yeah, there you go. Now, I've got you set up with the socket on here. So now is what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna take off the two nuts. Yep, that one right there, one on the other side. Don't lose your nuts now. Okay. There you go. Got it. All right, now pull that wheel right up off there. Easy. Easy, all right. Now, we're having fun. So what we gotta do, is we gotta get this tire off of the rim. How do you think we're gonna do that? Uh, pull it. Pull it? But try it, I don't know. Seems like it's working. Got it? You never lose this. Never, don't ever lose your valve stem cap. I mean it. All right, we're gonna wanna put a little air in this to get it around, and then we're gonna stuff it in the tire, okay? okay. All right, let's go add some air. So now that we've got a little bit of air in there, just poke this back in the tire. There you got it. All right, now let's go air this up and then we'll get this back on the bike. All right, well, good job fixing your bike. Go ride and don't break an arm or a leg. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Ready? We've had success with the bicycle. They're adventuring. Now, we're gonna adventure and we're gonna put on our door pockets. We're gonna start with the driver and passenger door. Now, if you got a two door, you just gotta order them for a two door. If you got a four door, well, you gotta order them for a four door. You get the front doors and then the rear doors. I mean, it makes sense. Only tool you're gonna need for the front doors is provided in your Bronco tool kit. It's just the little Torx thing. I don't know, I can't read. It says something on here, but if you got your Bronco kit, you're covered. They even have one that just goes in a little quarter inch impact. Now, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to remove the factory door pocket panel thing. We're, we're going new. 
you can tell that these are a perfect fit. So all you got to do is just take your impact and take out all six of the factory bolts in the door. Enough of this mashy fiber stuff. Look at that. It just, it's junk. What were you thinking, Ford? I mean, I'm glad you were thinking. What were you thinking? I mean, you put one water bottle in there and that's shot immediately. You hook your big Sasquatch feet on there and immediately shot. You pull on it the wrong way and immediately shot. I mean, look, that material's just pinched in between junk. Now, you just take your new one and it lines up flawlessly. And you just put your hardware right back in. But first, I'm gonna wipe down the door panel because I care. Now that I've wiped it off, we're gonna just take and put this in here and tighten them back up. And that's literally as easy as it has to be. Don't make it any more complicated than it needs to be. DV8 didn't. Don't tighten them too tight. Just snug, that's all you gotta do. That's not going anywhere. Try breaking that. I dare you. What are you gonna put in your new door pocket panel? Molly, grid, niceness. Well, if you have a Bronco, likelihoods of you watching this video, you probably do, or you're interested in one. Well, I'm gonna keep this close to my heart. This is my winch controller. I get my Bronco stuck all the time, but my Warren winch saves the day. So I've got in this bag, my winch controller and a soft shackle. And now when I get the Bronco stuck, I can just like look at my spotter and be like, hey, coming in hot, just like that. All right, guys, I want to just tell you and show you how simple it is to install these door pockets that Monica is going to race the what? The clock. The clock. The phone. The phone clock. Ready to go. So easy and Monica can do it. Is that a thing? No. That's a lot. That's kind of mean. Hire me, I do installs. Ooh. <laughs> Spicy. Well, is it really an install when it's just a direct replacement <laughs> bolt on part? Like, come on. You seem to think so. Oh, hey. hey. Next time I'm replacing coilovers by myself. <laughs> well, I can do a full set, not to brag or nothing. I can do four coilovers, all four corners on a Bronco in less than four hours. I think that's impressive. I, I want to race you. Okay. Game on. Somebody. Yes, we need suspension <laughs> if you're watching. <laughs> Somebody bring me a Bronco. Come on, you're at a minute 16. I'm going. I I, no, I thought this was like going to be a minute. You told me not to over tighten it. Well, yeah. I pre prepped you. Pre prepped? You thought this was going to be a minute? You got no, a lot I of thought. faith in me, babe. Boom. A minute? It was 137. 37. Yeah. We'll give you credit. It's 38. But that just goes to show. Anybody can install these just like that. Anybody. I got bad news. Oh no. Wait, is the microphone connected? Yeah, it's okay. I got bad news. <laughs> What's the bad news? I reviewed the footage. Oh. I got a doc no, yeah, you point. Didn't. Yeah, I did. You're, you don't edit. No, I did. I reviewed it. I reviewed it when I witnessed it. <laughs> there was a problem. I'm going to have to dock you another three seconds on your install. For what? Mm hmm. We can review it. Do you want to? Sh I'll back All right, put right it here. In I'm inserting it right now. I'm. She's inserting it right now. Removed the old one, clear as day, right there. Okay. And immediately slapped the new one on I didn't without wipe wiping it. Down. it. Mm -hmm. mm. Three whole seconds out of that. So, I mean, now you're like a minute 49 deep. I was rushed. Was that three seconds? No, it's 41. It doesn't matter. Maps. It's hard. But the, <laughs> the fact of the matter is. Is it just so easy? Don't forget to wipe the door panel. Now, 
we're gonna get the rear ones installed. They're adorable. They're little. Tiny. They're little. <laughs> little guys. The rear is a little bit more interesting. Get out your sharp pocket knife. Because we're gonna actually cut the mesh off of the rear ones. And then these little tabs just slide right into the plastic and you're done. Let me show you. Are we, are we breaking it? I don't... Technically? No, we're not. We're making it better. Make the Bronco great again. Let's do it. <laughs> so now there's two options to install this guy. Literally just goes on like that. You can cut this mesh out in one of two ways. You can either take the bungee out of it or just cut the mesh out. I'm going to leave the bungee because I think that's nice in the rear. We didn't get that option in the front. So all you got to do is just pull as hard as you can, take a good sharp razor blade and cut this. You want to make sure you cut it down low enough that you don't see any of that material. So pull it and then trim it away and just get it out of your Bronco. I've had enough. Now that you've got that off, you just got to cut it off of your bungee. Now, if you don't like the bungee, you can cut it out of there. But when we put something in here, I want to I wanna be able to, I don't know, the kids might, you know, strum up a little song. You know, hey, you know, I don't know. I like the bungee, so we're leaving it. Now, literally, see that? I've already installed it. Those tabs just push right behind the factory thing that's in the door. But that's not going to be secure. Pops right out. So let me go grab the hardware. All right, I'm going to give you a visual demonstration of how to get these mounted. They send these little tiny brackets with self-tapping screws. All you got to do is in the bottom of this molly panel, just take this and hook it right in there. You'll know if you've done it right if this goes flat against the door. I mean, if you do it wrong, it's wrong. It's not right. That's right. And that's wrong. And if you install it upside down, that's wronger. So just get it right. It's easy. You just hook it in there and then two little self tappers. Now they're just going into plastic. Be gentle. Just, you know, zip and tight is tight. If you strip it out, well, then you're mad. Don't be mad. Okay. We're going to screw this in and show you the after product. Stand by. No. And there it is. That ain't gonna pop out and you got your little banjo string. I like it. Let's do the other side now. Oh, there you are. Let's do the other side now. Did you, did you see the banjo string in here? Pretty good. And there it is. Just like that. Movie magic. Way better. Plus, now you have all the options to mount whatever you want. I'm pretty sure Bronco owners it, when it comes to molly panel, only know how to mount one thing, and that's a shovel. So mount your shovel on your door panels now, but I am so excited about this next piece, the overhead molly panel, because then you just rein up, you got your shovel right at your hand, right, just right there. I can't wait to have my shovel inside. So get him. There's cops going by. Anyway, we got to do some disassembly to get this installed. Not much, but to make it easy and to show you guys as best we can, we're gonna pop the roof panels off just to get it all up in there to show you. All right, so for your Molly panel install above the driver. Now, from the pictures, it looks like we're gonna have plenty of head clearance room. I'll let you know. That's my only concern with this is how high is it going to stay against the roof? We don't have a roof right now. Anyway, we got to install this bracket. Comes with the kit. This bracket, we're going to end up having to pull down some of the trim pieces here. And it's going to go up above your switch panel here. If you don't have switches, what do you have here? Sunglasses. Sunglasses? Yeah. Well, we got sunglasses here. And sunglasses there. They're just okay. And sunglasses... We don't have a sunglasses holder. Hmm. Well, this molly panel is going to change that. We're going to mount sunglasses and a shovel to this molly panel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first things first. You got to find yourself a good quality T20 Torx. 
See it? Do you see it? Oh, okay. I, if you can see it, you saw it. So what we got to do is we're going to get our visor out of the way. You know, that'll catch my head a couple hundred times. Now, you see this little tab under here? You just got to get you a little tiny pick or a pry tool and pop that open. Careful. Don't break it. You'll void your warranty. Then, get your T20 up in here. Fish around. Fumble around a little bit. And eventually, do I, I don't, I don't, I can't find it. I'm not finding it in here. They say it's here. It's there. Oh, hey, I got it. Now, righty to Lucy, lefty tidy, something, Europe. Take this out, and this little thing comes right off. Now, careful, you don't lose that screw. It's gone. So now, is what we're going to do is you're just going to gently pop that down. Scares me slightly. But is what we're going to do is now we're going to remove this bolt here, T50. Guess what? You'll never guess. Did you guess? I guess. What'd you guess? It's in your toolkit. It's in your Bronco toolkit. All you got to do is just keep your Bronco tools around. All right? Okay. So we're going to undo this one and then this one on the driver's side. And then also right here, there's a 10 millimeter nut bolt. Is it it's just a removing? It's a screw. It's a Phillips. Yep. So remove that 10 millimeter Phillips screw bolt nut. And is what you're going to do is reinstall all this hardware with the provided bracket. So this bracket sits up in here just like that. Now, important step. Don't forget it. You'll be upset if you do. You can either admit it to yourself that you forgot it, or you you're, you you did it. Okay, is so what we're gonna do? Provided in the package. Don't throw these away. There's two of them. You need them. You gotta take and put these on here, like that. Do one on this side, and then on the flop side. Flip the flop. Okay. So Monica's gonna install this, and I'm gonna remove the bolts and i use the tools of power and we're gonna undo this maybe did i i got it don't lose it in your headliner but put it in a safe place then we're gonna do it again and then i'm basically ready for the bracket already did you did you put the sticky things on yep. monica oh good okay. oh yeah you're quick right. good job Okay, I'm always behind. Didn't even put the camera down. The hurrier I go, the behinder I get. Mm -hmm. That's a quote, if you didn't know what that was. So, 10 millimeter, screw butt, nut bolt, Phillips, torque down. It's going to take a second. I wish I had tiny hands. Hey, I own some of those. Look, 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 look. The struggle. Okay. Well, I've got it already done like 93 quarters like, of the way. Do it real quick. Fine. And then it's done. Oh, oh wow. No. You failed. <laughs> Don't drop your not screw bolt millimeters in there. <laughs> I got it. So it's kind of hard to see up in there. But we got the hardware put back into place. It's not tight yet. But I'm going to start with the big bolts because that seems right. How tight? I don't know. Tell it feels good, I guess. I guess it feels good. Wow, I missed. That's fine. Then, don't forget to tighten your 10 millimeter. Important. Then, once you've got this done, just go ahead and put all this back together. It's like you're never even there. All right, guys, now we gotta actually mount the bracket that's gonna hold our crossbar. They send you this kind of crazy looking bracket. It's got a little hook on it. Well, that hook is gonna reside right here in this channel. Also, on the Bronco, there's a hole here. There's an eight millimeter nut. So we're gonna have to remove that nut, bolt, screw, Torx. What is it? I don't know. It's a mystery, actually. So remove this, whatever this is. And then we're gonna come up here and remove these two T50s. Just like we did up front, tools in your Bronco kit. Okay, remove these two bolts. Then, 
as we install this, there's this pressure plate that's going to sit on top right here. And this is going to hold pressure back over where this hooks in right here. So this will go right on top. And we're going to use all our factory bolts again. Now, if you have a soft top, you're not going to have this bracket here. You might not even have the bolts. I don't know if a soft top would have the bolts. So they provide bolts in the kit to replace these. I want to reuse my factory bolts because I think they're definitely going to be long enough. I broke this one loose just to test that. And it certainly does look definitely long enough that I can get that under there and have a whole bunch of room tighten it down. So you're not going to have this entire bracket at all. But they also do send provided spacers that are going to go underneath the pressure plate so that way when you do bolt it down, you're gonna hold down pressure on this guy. Okay, seems easy enough. Now let's put th the theories. The bolt screw nut thing, not sure what it is to call it in life, is an eight millimeter. So maybe that's the name of it. Is it just an eight millimeter? Seems like it could be. Get it on there. Do it by braille. All right, there we go. Now, I'm going to hook that guy on there. And for right now, we're going to leave all this loose because you're going to have to adjust it a little bit once we get our crossbar in. So don't send it to home yet. The pressure plate and re-put in factory hardware or provided hardware. And again, we're going to leave it loose because that's what I'm saying to do. Yeah, you heard it. I said it. All right, I put it snug. Yep, that's holding pressure. Okay, let's pop the ones on the other side. Hurry, go. So we've got our crossbar in here and we've located it. We figured out where it's going to go. So at this point, I'd confidently say you can actually tighten everything down. My recommendation, just looking at this, this bracket has some room. You're really trying to just hold in this back piece where it's clipping into the Bronco. So I'm gonna push this all the way back and I'm gonna tighten it down as far back as I can adjust it. I'm sure there's a torque value. I just seems fine now don't forget to tighten up your eight millimeter we're gonna get that done on both sides and then we're gonna actually get this crossbar bolted in this is awesome i like it a lot a lot if you're in the back seat and haven't graduated the passenger princess yet you get a roll bar something to hold on to up here just in case you know when you're going downhill oh it's not attached yet <laughs> Pretty nice. It's right at the right height. Unless you're really tall. Even then, it wouldn't be in your headspace at all. Pretty nice. I dig it. The handle's gonna be nice back here. I won't know because I'm not gonna ride in the back much, but hey, you know, maybe. Okay, so we've got our hardware in here and we're gonna leave it loose for now. That way we have the adjustability front to back. Okay. Now we're gonna get our Molly panel piece. Molly panel piece. We're going to shoot it up on in here and it goes on top of your switch panel and sits in just like that. Now we're going to get all four of the other bolts lined up in there, loose, and then we'll probably get the ones in up front, tighten those down, and then tighten everything front to back. This is going to be awesome. I like the adjustability to, you know, hang stuff. I see a radio right here in the future what i'm saying plus it's up a lot higher than i assumed so i like that i don't think i'll hit my big old head on it maybe i don't know plus i like that there's a crossbar in here you know the raptors have that so now the bronco has it thanks dv8 you got a washer on top and bottom of your bolt and then they even provide nylocks for this so it should not rattle loose that's the only thing that I could think might happen over time is it might rattle. But I guess if you tighten it down the right way to begin with, it shouldn't rattle. So now let's get 
these in, I think. I think I can turn the ramp. Oh, hey guys, here I am. Okay, now, like a jungle gym in here. You can crawl over everything. Okay, I'm gonna ah, go more rearward. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, you hold up on it. Thank you, buddy. You're my best friend. He said you need a buddy for installs. I would definitely write this as a buddy needed. Anybody need somebody? I don't sing. Okay, you can release the no grip. Buddy. Yeah, here, buddy. <laughs> so we've got our four rear pieces, bolts, screws, nuts. I don't know. Super glue. We got these in here tight. It's a 10 millimeter and a, what's the, it's a four millimeter, looks like. So now that I've got these tight, I'm gonna tighten up the two front most because then I know exactly where it's gonna line up, where it's gonna be center in the Bronco, and then we'll tighten down the four others. And guess what? You're done. Just start mounting your accessories to your Molly panel. I got something on my sleeve. I'm gonna tighten these up and I'm gonna hurry and show you what I'm mounting to my Molly panel. You can, you'll dig it, I'm sure. Would you look at that? Just look at it. I truly really like this. I was kind of skeptical at first, but the option to mount things overhead, you have that in a lot of other vehicles with storage, but not in the Bronco because the removable roof. I also really like the back bar. People always complain, there's nothing to hold on to back here. Well, now you do. Like you just, you know, chill right there. Spot? No, not mine, <laughs> but I actually like this. and it's like really sturdy so i got something to mount on there you can't have molly panel not mount anything on there this back seat's small yeah okay let's mount something on there that's not going anywhere that's awesome we got shovel mount inside now mm -hmm. think of the possibility we could get little shovels and store up here in like this basket area how many shovels is too many shovels? I don't think there's ever such a thing as too many shovels. I like it. So the whole reason we got this mount is put this shovel right here. Yep. Boy, that'd be dangerous if you got in a collision. <laughs> Good thing I don't ride him back. Okay, let's put the roof back on. Now that we've got street cred, overlanding cred, because we got a shovel, on the inside of a Bronco, makes sense. Now we get to install these awesome skids that go on our trailing arm, I think is the name. I think people call them a radius arm before. I don't know if that's right. Is it radius arm or is it trailing arm or is it forearm? I don't know, that's what I'm saying. So these are simple to install. Literally you have the main nut that goes through the trailing arm. Well, that's what's really holding this guy on. And then there's two bolts that you have to open up one of the holes on the frame and then you just bolt it on and you're done. These just hook the back side of the frame. The driver side is simple. In fact, I've already done it. I'll show you. The passenger side is a little bit different. You got to get Dennis in there and he's got to take a part of the gas tank, slide it out of the way. But I've got a different idea. We're playing with skid plates and stuff all the time, so our gas tank's in and out all the time. So I'm going to try to prolong the process of having to remove a bracket. I'll show you. Did you get all the tools on the passenger side? Yeah. Yeah? Do you want to take this to the passenger side? Yeah. Now careful. Don't scratch it. This is a skid plate. Okay. They're never supposed to be scratched. Okay? Well, one tree. I would say you would. Oh, wow. Hey. Bronco owners take note. Come on, let's go look at this one I got installed. It's awesome. DV8. DV8 skid plate installed, right? So literally we got our two little bolts and then there's a little nut bracket I'll show you it goes on the back side and then your main one holds it and it just literally slides right on. Can't be any easier, but because the fuel tank is on the passenger side, that's why I wanted to show you a little bit more in depth on that side of what you got to do because it might be a little bit of a hassle, but Nevertheless, our Bronco didn't have the, you know, factory Ford skid plates welded on there. They're just little tabs of metal is all. So 
this is going to be much better. You're knocking all the dirt down. How do people know we haven't been off road if there ain't dirt on the Bronco? No, yeah, it is dirt. We've been on road yet, they aren't. I know, but if we clean it up, they'll they'll don't they'll think we're not off roaders. Okay. But we're hey, we're overlanders because we got a shovel on the inside. Okay. Yeah. Wow, we up. So, just got to take off the one nut. That's what mainly holds the skid plate on. And this slides in, hooks on just like that. But now, if you look under here, there's a bracket right here. Now, we've been in the rocks. Ours is already loose, but what this bracket's doing is it's protecting your fuel tank from the back of the bolt coming through the trailing arm. So you're supposed to actually take this bracket off to get this to rotate up to go over the frame like we need it to. Now in my case, it's already bent. We're gonna be doing skid plates in a while anyway. We've been working on skid plates, you know, making our own here and there. Anyway, I'm gonna just take and put a pry bar behind here and I'm just gonna bend this out of the way. Now another area that you may have to trim if you have a factory skid plate is right in here. So this arm or this skid plate can come right up and sit in there. But as long as I can get that out of the way, this is going to hook behind it. But the instructions do say to fully remove this plate. To do that, you'll have to loosen up the gas tank and slide it over a little bit. Yeah, I don't think you'd have to totally take the fuel tank down, but just shimmy it out of the way. But I don't want to do that right now. So I want these on and it's already bent. So I'm just going to bend it more. Yeah. So now that we've got the clearance on the backside, you know, the right way, wrong way. These two holes, that's where your little bolts are gonna go through. This frontmost hole is already big enough, but this rearward most this is holes not. So just drill it out and you know, it's only metal, it'll be fine. It's a quality drill. You can tell because the hose clamp. That should be good enough. Now, let's bolt it on. So they send these spacers to go behind the skid plate in between the Bronco frame rail and the skid plate. Your bolt's gonna go through that. Then they give you this little tab with nuts welded on it. And then they just thread right in. So you just push that up in there. It's nice that you can hold on to it. Once it's threaded on, both of them, then just tighten down your main trailing arm bolt and well, you're done. It's about the easiest install, although I didn't do it 100% to the book. So I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. And there it is. We got it in there. I did have to do a little love tapping on here. I definitely should be trimming this edge to the fuel tank uh, skid plate, but we're going to be changing that out soon enough. So I'm not too concerned with that. When I do do that portion of the project, I'll, you know, cut it out of the way. So just giving it a smack for now, good enough. We have got the Bronco set up now with some Deviate goods, inner fender liners, hooks up front on the bumper. The door pocket organizers, those are awesome. I'm very excited about that. The skids, and then shovel action. That's so cool. I am super excited to actually mount things to that. Do we need a shovel inside? No, but you know, we're an overlander apparently. So for now the shovel stays. But when we mount stuff up there, we're gonna let you know. But for right now, get off your couch. Great adventures. Back to, back to adventures.